Hello and welcome to this episode of Kennedy Saves the World. I was in Fiji last week, so there were a couple of replays from past episodes of this very podcast. And uh, I'm very grateful to the team here at Fox News Podcasts who have done an amazing job going back and finding relevant clips uh, from our near past and playing them for you so I could go trapes in another part of the world uh, that was very, very far away. But as you know, if you've traveled long distance, there is something super special about places that take a long time to get to. Fiji has been on my list for a long time. And maybe it's just because the rectangular bottles of water are so delicious. And uh, they did, in fact, have Fiji water there in the plastic bottles. And there, I was told that there is silica in the Fiji water that occurs naturally that takes heavy metal toxicity out of your body. I don't know if any of that is true, but I felt better when I was there. As you know, I got super sick before I went. I was a little worried that I was going to be miserable flying. So I was on antibiotics and inhalers and prednisone, and it was pretty brutal. Uh, But I did heal up by the time I left Friday and from New York City, I connected in Los Angeles. I spent a few hours, landed at LAX, basically spent the day there. And then, uh, you know, 9.30 at night, met my bestie Heidi. And we boarded a midnight flight for Fiji that was so easy. You didn't even have to take a Benadryl. That's the beautiful thing. So if you ever have the chance to go far away, always take the red eye. And the key with the red eye is two things. You don't want to be too tired when you get on because your body will be so shocked. You are going to fight your own sleep because you're going to have too much adrenaline. So what you have to do, and I would say this for any travel, is the few nights before you go somewhere, always bank your sleep. That means uh, make sure that you get at least three solid nights of sleep before you go because you're not working at a sleep deficit. So then when you get on the plane, you can just pretty much automatically go to sleep. And that's what I did. I slept for about eight and a half hours of the 10 hour and 45 minute flight. Uh, Then woke up, walked around, watched a movie. We landed in Fiji, which is absolutely beautiful. From the second we landed, you know when you land somewhere and you can just tell in the air that you're somewhere special and it's beautiful. That's how it was. I described it as being Hawaii with a graduate degree Uh, because like Hawaii, it is tropical and lush and a little bit mysterious, but uh, it's much farther away you know, again, it's almost 11 hours from LA, whereas Hawaii is about six. So it's twice the distance from the West Coast of the United States, but we flew Fiji Airways. And uh, that was an amazing airline. I requested gluten-free meals. The seats were comfortable. They were quiet. They were reclined beautifully. Uh, and you are allowed to recline. Remember, we established that in my Daily Mail column from last year. Uh, the recliners have the edge here because that's what the seats are designed to do. And that's what I always do. And you should too. Recline on my lap. I don't care. The plane was great. The service was fantastic. They're stoked to be Fijian. And when we landed, we were met at the airport, took a 15-minute helicopter ride to Malolo Island, M-A-L-O-L-O, and stayed at the Six Senses Fiji. And it was uh, stunningly beautiful, literally 14, 15 minute helicopter ride. Uh, The pilot, John, who was in the Royal Army in Great Britain, he was a a pilot then. And now he has one of the best jobs in the world, which he gets to live and work in Fiji. And he pointed out all the islands and all the surf breaks and where we should go and what to avoid. And it was gentle and peaceful and absolutely beautiful. One of the coolest things that uh, we saw there, in addition to the Southern Cross, uh, which you can see in the Southern Hemisphere, it's not visible for those of us in the North, but if you love astronomy, uh, the seeing was not perfect because we were there during a full moon, but because there is no light pollution, the stars that you could see were brilliant and wonderful and special as they always are when you're looking down from where you are on the globe when you're normally looking up. Don't go anywhere. More Kennedy saves the world right after this. So it was great to see uh, Vega and the Southern Cross and Alpha Centauri and uh, some of the other things that look so magical when you're viewing them from a new perspective. But the coolest thing was the moon. 
because, you know, the sun obviously sets and then the moon rises. And uh, it was really fun for two nights to get up uh, before five in the morning when the moon is still in the sky, but it's setting over the South Pacific Ocean. And watching the moon set was so magical and so beautiful. Uh, the way the light was sort of um, diffused through the sky and, you know, the, the moon just shined on the water as it uh, slowly made its descent in uh, the the other part of the sea and the sun as the moon is setting the sun is just starting to come up and the balance in between the two was really the most magical time of day because they have at the hotel we stayed at they have their own chicken coop and uh it's called cluckingham palace and so as the moon is about to set this full beautiful special incredible moon the sun was coming up and you can just, you can't see the sun, but you can just see the first light. And then you hear the roosters start to crow. And that was really special. And uh, so Heidi is particularly sensitive to the moon. So, you know, the two nights when the moon was at its fullest, she was going outside and checking it. And so uh, she luckily woke me up so we could see, like, behold, this incredible majesty of the Fijian moon. And it really is something special. So if you're thinking about Fiji, I think it is completely worth it. There were so many great people there, some really interesting travelers. If you don't normally run into people from Australia and New Zealand, they all know how to have a good time. Uh, they're conversational. They're fun. They're curious. There were a few Americans there. There were some honeymooners, which was very, very cute. Uh, we met a couple from California that was there for eight days on their honeymoon. And it was really special because a lot of people go to Fiji to surf. Uh, where we were, there's a very famous reef break, a surf break called Cloud Break. And the waves there get massive. So we did not go near it because I, that truly is like a barreling, massive, huge, heavy wave uh, that is perfect for pro surfers and people who really know how to surf. So we got to see it from a boat and that was really great. But the baby waves are at a place called swimming pools. And again, it's reef break. So you have to be very mindful. And they tell you when you fall off your board, you have to fall like a starfish, completely flat. You don't want to go feet first uh, because you will cut up your extremities on the reef, especially if you get more shallow, closer to shore. And you, you have to be careful about when you catch a wave and you better be damn sure if you're paddling for something, you are going to catch it because you will find out the hard way that you will get washed through the spin cycle. And then, you, you know, the waves get pretty big pretty quick. Even at the baby pools, those are some of the biggest waves that I have ever surfed. Swimming pools was awesome. It was beautiful. It's right. I'm regular footed. So it was perfect for me. And the couple that was there on their honeymoon, it was their very first time surfing. They learned to surf and they both did it. Uh, they both wore, rode these glorious long waves. They did so well. It was really fun watching them. And it felt like their marriage was officially blessed the day they learned to surf on their honeymoon in Fiji. And uh, that was incredible. The next day we went to a different break called Nomotu Lefts, and, which was too big for me. And I'm not ashamed to say it. One of the best things that you can do uh, when you're adventuring or surfing or you know wherever you are where the, uh, the required skills exceed your ability, be humble about it. So I did, I paddled around for about a half hour, tried to paddle for a couple ways. They were way too big. I would have got munched and eaten alive. And my anxiety just kept rising and rising and rising to the point where my anxiousness exceeded my fun. So I paddled back to the boat with another woman named Janine, who was on this great girls trip uh, with women from Southern California, from the San Diego area. And they all converged in Fiji and we all got to go. It was just women one day on the boat because you have to take a boat to these reefs. It is not beach break. You know, it's about a 15 minute boat ride from the place we were staying. But it was really great to be 
with these cheering women who are strong and cool and adventurous and fun. And, you know, we all high-fived each other. Heidi did catch the wave of the day at Nemotu Left. She caught the most incredible wave of the surf coach, and they always underplay how big the waves are. They always estimate their size by at least half of what we do here in the continental United States. Uh, So if they say it's a four to six foot wave, it's an eight to 12 foot wave. And he told Heidi that wave was double overhead. And that wave was amazing. She is goofy footed. So she got just a beautiful, spectacular left. Then we went back to swimming pools and got to end on a great note. Uh, The people that we met there, Dan Sinclair is a pro surfer who runs a surfing school through the six senses. And uh, all the people that we met on our journey from the pro surfers uh, to the newbies and those of us who are like me more toward the newbie side, even though I've been doing it for a long time, uh, to the people who are really, really good and just want to get better. It was so much fun sharing this love Uh, for the sun and the planet and a new place. We all got a new stamp in our passport. It was definitely worth the travel. So if you're thinking about Fiji, uh, I would definitely move it into the yes column and push your boundaries a little bit in terms of how far you're willing to go. You never know when that beautiful moon is going to surprise you. This has been Kennedy Saves the World. I'm Kennedy. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts and Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app. Oh, go ahead and leave me a review while you're there. I'd love to hear what you have to say. You've been listening to Kennedy Saves the World on the Fox News Podcast Network.